Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for joining today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com, and today we are looking at uh, a new solution showcase for Microsoft Dynamics 365 for customer engagement, uh, previously known as CRM. Um, these events have, uh, this is I think the, the fourth or fifth of, of these that we've run um, over the recent month, and they've been a lot of fun and really educational. It's been a unique opportunity to um, get a, a brief introduction to many of the really high-value solutions out there in the in the Dynamics ecosystem. And today's no uh, no different. We'll have a great lineup of really varied, um, but again, all um, uh, all uh, particularly um, focused. Uh, on, value-driven uh, solutions. Uh, I'm just going to give a couple notes about housekeeping and then we're going to really launch into it. So um, we do welcome your questions throughout the event. We will have a Q&A period at the end of the hour. Um, so enter your questions anytime into the Q&A block that you see um, just to the right of the main uh, presentation area in the WebEx window. Uh, we will hold on to those and we will make sure they, they do get answered. Um, in terms of the format today, let me just introduce you um, briefly to um, who's going to be presenting. We have five presenters. Each of them is going to have 10 minutes to, um, to talk to you, to show you um, a little bit about their applications, to share some information about, about their uh, solutions and businesses. Um, and we'll be moving quickly. So um, I don't want to take up too much additional time here. Um, this is also the order that you see here um, is, is how we're going to proceed. We're going to start with, uh, with uh, Gethin Liddell from Cafe X, then move on to Michael from Cobalt. And, and on through um, through the group. Uh, so without any further delay, I think we are ready to begin. So um, Gethin Liddell from CAFEX, I'm going to hand control over to you and invite you to begin. Thank you very much, Jason. Okay, so uh, my name is Gethin Liddell. I'm from CAFEX Communications, and over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to Live Assist for Dynamics 365. Um, Live Assist for Dynamics 365 is a solution that we have put together with Microsoft that brings omni-channel capabilities directly into the Dynamics 365 platform. Very much Dynamics is at the heart of the uh, environment. That's where your customer data is. That's where all your opportunities are. That's where your cases, your tickets are. It's what we refer to as the single source of truth. And what we're bringing to the Dynamics environment is the ability to add in multiple different channels into that and provide an omni-channel experience. And what we mean by that is that a customer that comes to you maybe on uh, one day, maybe they phone in over the telephone, their case gets recorded as a telephone activity, and then the next day they want to chat with you over a web chat solution. Well, Microsoft Dynamics is able to provide the association between all those different activities to that particular user. So you can very easily work and understand the different conversations that you've been having with that user and not need to get them to repeat everything. So the solution that uh, Cafe X brings with Live Assist for Dynamics 365, it offers multiple different types of engagements, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of some of these. To begin with, we have the ability to do content engagements, and this is really about being able to dynamically push text and images to users on your website in order to help guide them around on their journey without needing to actually involve any of your contact center resources. So it can be a very efficient way to help someone on your website without having to utilize your expensive human resources. We also offer chat. Uh, so this is the ability to launch a web chat conversation from a website through to the uh, Live Assist ecosystem and to any agents inside of that. And then those agents can take advantage of various tools, one of those being Cobra's capability. Co-browse is the ability to see the web page or the mobile application that the user is on and be able to assist them on their journey. If they're trying to purchase a product, if they're trying to find information uh, to help them out, something like that, then you can help them through the journey, direct them to where they need to go, and help to troubleshoot any problems they've got. You can see the same view they have. It's a lot easier to assist them. We've also got an integration into the Microsoft Bot Framework, so you can utilize bots in order to service the customer. 
and we can also perform escalations of the chat conversations to voice and video calling capabilities as well. So I'm going to give you a demonstration of some of these core concepts. And we'll see here uh, a use case that I'm sure we're all familiar with, and that is of someone coming to a hotel website looking to book themselves a room. And we will see how Live Assist is able to help this customer and allows agents to be able to come in and direct the customer on their journey. To begin with, we will launch a chat conversation and we will see our visitor conversing with a bot. And this bot exists in the Microsoft Bot Framework. It actually uses a service called the Q&A Maker. And this allows you to very easily build up a bot that can answer questions based on a database of uh, questions and answers it has been trained with. Those can be trained from your website, from an FAQ, or, or from a uh, spreadsheet or local file. So here we see our visitor that's come to our website, and uh, we present them with a pre-chat survey just to collect some basic information about them. And it's very easy for you to be able to configure the, uh, the look and feel of this, whether there's a pre-chat survey, what questions are asked, things like that. But the point is that you can very easily offer up a chat engagement to your user, and they're able to then engage with your agents. So we can see here that our visitor has launched the chat conversation, and they've been routed straight through to our resident Q&A bot in the hotel. Uh, now, bots are great, but they're still quite a new technology. So we uh, provide messages to reassure the user that uh, if we can't assist you in the bots, then we can transfer you very easily to a human agent. And we can see that our visitor, even though they're talking to a bot, they're very much using their natural language to converse. So we said hello to the bot, said, hi, do you have a golf course? Cool, do you have a spa? The intelligent services that the Microsoft Bot Framework utilizes is able to understand the intent of the questions and find the relevant answer to return. But here we can now see that our visitor has actually asked the bot to perform a task. It's asked the bot to book a room, which it can't do. It's a question and answer bot, not a task-based bot in this example. So the bot offers up the ability to transfer the human off, the, sorry, the visitor off to a human agent and we can see there that uh, the visitor requested that to happen and the transfer has completed. So it's all very seamless from a customer experience, being able to converse with a bot and then being able to converse with our human agents. So now we're going to change our view and look at this from the agent perspective. What is it that the agent is doing? Where is the agent living? Well, of course, our agent is directly inside of Dynamics 365. So here we can see a typical Dynamics 365 view, and we can see our um, dashboard on the left-hand side, and we can see our chat widgets on the right-hand side. So the first thing we're going to do is say hello to our visitor, and we do this through canned messages. There's various efficiency gains for agents inside the solution. Canned messages is just one such example where it's very easy for you to look up find the correct message that you want to send and be able to send that out. The whole point about Live Assist is not only to make the visitor engagement process better from a customer experience perspective, but also that of the agent or the customer service representative as well. If we can make their job easier and more efficient, then it's a win-win. And because we're embedded directly inside of Dynamics 365, then we can interact with the data that's in here. So for example, we will now do a search for this particular user in the contacts, and this allows us to associate our chat conversation with this particular user. And in so doing, you can then perform all your analytics inside of Dynamics 365. But of course, we know that this visitor is on a hotel website, and they have wanted assistance in booking a hotel room. We really want to educate them on how they can do that themselves. So here we can see our co-browse capability on the left-hand side, where our agent is able to see the same view of the web page that the customer has got. But more than just see the view of the web page, they can also interact with it. So we can annotate on the screen, we can spotlight on the screen, we can draw their attention to different areas. 
So as we're communicating with the visitor we're, uh, via the chat channel, we're also able to direct them and interact with the web page that they're on. And as their web page updates in real time, our agent's view will also update. So if the customer navigates to a different page, then our agent's view will, will uh, reflect the change that happened. And there might be information that you don't want the agent to be able to see, perhaps credit card data, things like that, personal information. But it's very easy to redact that information. And we can see here that there's black boxes on the web page um, where we have redacted that information out. And you can also perform actions such as being able to push documents and push further information. And all our data, again, is stored directly inside of Dynamics 365, which allows you to perform all your analytics based on the chat conversations you've had and be able to understand customer satisfactions. So I'm coming to the end of my time slot. Um, so I'll just very briefly uh, go over some of the other capabilities that I haven't got time to show you today. We also support voice and video escalation. So that's the ability to take a chat conversation that you're in and be able to decide that you need to escalate that to voice and video. We support uh, desktop mobile browsers as well as uh, native mobile applications. And you can also integrate into social media platforms. Perhaps you've got a Facebook site and people are coming to your Facebook page in order to communicate with you, or they can use Facebook Messenger to communicate with your agents inside of Live Assist. The Cobras capability also works very, very well with your call center, where your agents are just on, on the telephone. You don't need to have a chat channel associated with Cobras. You can very much you utilize our shortcode capability to allow a agent on call center to be able to co-browse with someone that's run, run, in, run in, sorry, into it. And all of this is done without any downloads or plugins. You can very easily get yourself a free trial of Live Assist for Dynamics 365 by going to App Source and doing a search for Live Assist. And there I have a link in for you to be able to access it directly. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Geffen. And our next presenter uh, is going to be Michael Ox from Cobalt. And Michael, I'm going to pass control to you. Just one note before, uh, as you get your screen up, Michael, um, any contact information you see on people's slides, I know you want to capture that. We'll have uh, a list of contacts as we uh, get into Q&A later as well. And uh, Michael, the, the floor is yours. All right, welcome, everyone. Um, Michael Ox from Cobalt. Today, I'm going to be showing you a um, a live migration using Migration Dynamics, a tool uh, from Cobalt. I actually did this demonstration on Saturday in 15 minutes, and uh, today I'm going to try to beat my record uh, in 10 minutes. So as you can see my screen, you can see on the left-hand side, I've got a uh, CRM 2011 on-prem instance of Dynamics. Uh, it's got some sample data in it. It's not necessarily a uh, you know a real life situation here. We've got about 300 records that we're going to migrate. However, um, you know the different types of data that we have in the system are enough to sort of show the um, uh, show off the tool. So I'm going to I've already installed Migration Dynamics on both our source and our destination organization. So our destination being a Dynamics 365 online environment. Uh, what you're looking at here is our Dynamics overview. Um, uh, dashboard. So we've got our pipeline, we've got our leads by source, cases by priority. We have the same uh, dashboard over here on the right. Looks a little bit different because it's Dynamics 365, but it has the same uh, it has the same charts in it with no data. So the first thing I'm going to do once you install Migration Dynamics is you go to Settings, and you'll see under Migration Dynamics the Migration Wizard. You'll run the Migration Wizard from your source organization. And when you run it the first time, it's going to ask you if you're in the right place. Uh, so it says Migration Dynamics, uh, the wizard should be run from the Source Dynamics organization. You'll also see this wizard in the destination organization, uh, but obviously you'll, you will uh, need to run this from the source. Um, it's going to ask you uh, one question on the first page. Is, do you want to keep your data in sync? That's our live migration option. The idea being is while you migrate your data, you can keep your data in sync, meaning you can continue to use your source organization, create data, update data, delete data uh, while your migration is happening. If I click Next, I'm going to be taken to the connection screen. I need to enter uh, my destination organization's connection information. 
I have already uh, done this once before as a practice, so I already have my destination organization in here. Uh, if you hadn't, uh, you would need to set up a new uh, connection here. I'm going to select that one and click Next. It's going to test my connection, and it's going to start to pull down some data from the destination. Specifically, what it pulls down is the uh, is users in the destination so that you can do user mapping. So I have a I only have a couple of, I actually have one user in the destination. I have a single user in the source organization. Obviously, this is just a, a demo. Um, but Migration Dynamics provides you with the ability to map multiple source users to um, a single destination user. So if you have uh, disabled users, old users that you want to map to a new user in your destination, you can. Uh, you can also maintain, if you want to set up disabled users in the destination, uh, you can do that as well. Um, basically, you need to license them add a role for them, and then pull their license, which is nice because then you don't have to pay for a license while you're doing a migration. Um, there's also a checkbox here to share records, so if you have shared views and things like that, it will share them with the appropriate people. All right, so now we're going to validate our migration setup. It's going to show me a couple of warnings here, uh, particularly there's a solution that doesn't exist in the destination that is in the source. That's fine. If you want to leave some customizations behind, you can. Uh, it's also going to disable plugins uh, for me because plugins can interfere with the migration pro process. If you want to avoid disabling plugins, you can click this checkbox, but uh, that can potentially affect the performance as well as the uh, integrity of the migration. All right, so this is my last screen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select everything. Uh, you have the ability to select specific entities. You can also filter entities with advanced find, but I'm going to select everything and I'm going to click Migrate. So now it's preparing the destination data. So we've got some algorithms in the back, on the back end of this that are, um, that do calculations based on the number of entities and the relationship between entities and determines what the best path towards migration is. So uh, the best way to migrate without, um, without, with the least number of orphaned records. Um, migration Dynamics will track orphans for you. So it will uh, reparent a record if uh, it gets to the destination and the parent isn't there. Uh, it will handle that for you. I do not want to restart my computer right now. That wouldn't be great. Um, so so um, while that's running, while it's queuing that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up another instance and give you a sample of uh, the live migration. So. That's queuing, that's pushing records up to Azure right now uh, to be written to the destination system. And while that's running, let's say, for instance, that we got a rush order in for migration dynamics. And we don't want to shut down our business while migration is happening. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a new order. And I'm going to call this um, MSDW rush order. I'm going to select customer. Arlington ice cream, cream, ice cream shop, price list, and go ahead and save that. All right, now I need to add a product. And specifically, I'm going to go ahead and add my Migration Dynamics product. We want one of those. Nope, that wasn't what I meant to do. That's our unit. Quantity one. All right. All right, so there's our rush order for migration dynamics. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice for this for our customer. And go ahead and um, oh, that's our account. Sorry. Let's go back and check on our migration at this point. All right, so we're still pushing stuff over. Um, Basically, what I was saying before is, um, you know, the way that Migration Dynamics work is, works is it pushes all of your data up out of your source organization and into a queue in Azure. Um, and the way that the live migration works is that it allows, um, once that data is pushed up to that queue, everything that happens after that uh, gets pushed up behind um, the records in that queue. So if you create a record and then update it, the create will go up uh, and then the update will follow. Uh, and those will get written sequentially into your destination system. Now, this queuing process happens within the context of your session uh, in, in the source organization. So 
Uh, while you're running this, you can't really move away from it. Uh, it's you know, basically telling you that um, you need to stay on this page until it's done queuing. Queuing process is pretty quick um, you know, as it's pushing that stuff up because it's not actually writing the data. Um, it is you know, pushing it to that queue. There's a job in Azure that will uh, ultimately write that data. As soon as this stuff is queued, uh, it will, the Azure service will start writing it to your destination, so you'll start to see the data coming into your destination system while this queuing is happening as well. So we've still got a few entities here to go. Um, if we were to jump over to our destination system, we can take a look, see if we've got anything coming in. So we can see a couple of records, these snapshot records, these are um, these are basically activity records for the migration process. Um, doesn't look like we've gotten any of our opportunities to come in yet, so let's give that a minute. And for those of you wondering out there how much time I have left in my 10 minutes, I have one minute and 50 seconds. I've got a counter going over here, so, um, so I think we're going to be okay. We're getting pretty close to the end here. Let's see how many. Once we get past this page, we'll actually get to the progress page that will show us how many records are yet to be written to the destination. Um, so let's just give this another minute. Or let's say 30 seconds. I don't know if I have another minute. All right. So migration dynamics can move um, out of the box entities. It can move custom entities. Uh, it can move some records um, that are um, it can move some records that are sort of metadata um, driven, things like views, um, some system forms that can also migrate. It will move your um, user queries. It will move workflows as well. Um, some things that it can't move are reports. Uh, well, it can move it can move fetch XML reports. It cannot move um, SQL reports, obviously, because uh, those SQL reports won't run in online. Um, but it looks like we're about We've got 284 records here left, and let's head back over to our destination. We should start to see some data pulling in here. Ah, not nothing yet. Do we have any accounts? We've got a couple of accounts coming in. No contacts yet. Oh, I'm down to 17 seconds. So close. Um, so, in my remaining couple of seconds, so we didn't quite get it done in 10 minutes, however, oh, Jason says I have 30 seconds, okay, so maybe we'll get this done. Um, but in my remaining time, essentially, we didn't quite get it done within the 10 minutes allotted, uh, but you can still see the power of tool because, um, you know, the, the, the quickness with which you can set this up and get it running uh, is the power of the tool. So, you don't need to map any data yourself, you don't need to worry about that. Um, you know, the, the complexities of the schema and things like that. Um, it'll pretty much handle all of that for you, and then um, all you have to worry about is running it. So there it is. It actually we are at time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just got it in there. Thank all you. Right. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, our next presenter is going to be Alex Walters of ExpertLogix. And Alex, I'm going to pass control uh, over to you. Great. Thank you, Jason. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Alex Walters. I am the Business Development Director here at ExpertLogix CPQ. And today I'm going to just share with you what is CPQ and why it might make sense for your business. So um, just a quick company snapshot here. Uh, ExpertLogix was founded in 2002, so we've been around for a while. We are fully certified for Microsoft Dynamics and 100% integrated to the platform. Uh, and CPQ is our main focus, and we like to say to people that CPQ is all we do. Right? We have over 275 customers using it, uh, specifically with Dynamics as well. So what is CPQ and why do companies need it? Well, CPQ stands for Configure, Price, and Quote. This will allow your salespeople to configure a quote with your products, the services, and all their related accessories, potentially on a guided selling manner. Okay? It will also calculate complex pricing on the fly as different options are selected, and of course having them produce a professional looking quote for your customers as well. Okay? 
So how does this help your company? Well, CPQ ensures that your salespeople are going to be spending a lot less time on the admin work and more time selling. Every salesperson now has product expertise with CPQ. So if you hire someone today, in theory, they can start quoting tomorrow. And we want to make sure that what you are quoting actually goes together. So that means that there's going to be option, you know, product option compatibility. CPQ also covers a broad range of different industries, uh, things like apparel, heavy equipment, software, hardware, and even professional services, just to name a few. And, and the commonality between all these companies is they have very unique, complex requirements around how they configure their products in order to get a, a quote out the door fast. So that is how CPQ is going to help. Okay. So, now, when we go out and speak uh, with different companies, we often hear that they are using many different types of tools to help them put together a quote. Tools like you know, Excel spreadsheets or Word documents. Uh, maybe they're flipping through uh, product catalogs to find the right pricing in, in product scenarios, right? Uh, some are use, still using older external solutions that are not integrated into their platforms of record, in this case, Dynamics. Uh, Maybe they're using paper and pencil still. Or, or this last one here, uh, maybe it's more so tribal knowledge, where there's somebody in your organization you know, that's been there for a long time, and they just know how to sell the products and knows how the process works. So we go to them to figure out what to do. Well, at the end of the day, this becomes impractical, because what ends up happening is when salespeople put together a quote, the customer is patiently waiting, sitting and thinking, you know, how much longer is it going to take them to get me a quote? Is it going to take hours, days, weeks? You know, is it right? Is it accurate? Is it what the customer requested? Does it make any sense? And what's the integrate where's the integration? You know, managers might be asking, well, what's my forecast and how do I report off of the products that are going out the door? Well, this is some of the pain points that we hear from customers, uh, and CPQ is here to alleviate. So what I'm going to do right now is go into a quick product demonstration here. And like Michael, I'm going to try to do it as uh, quickly and efficiently as possible. So on my screen, you're going to see out of the box Dynamics 365 for sales, uh, and I'm in an opportunity. With ExpertLogix, we work specifically with opportunities, quotes, and orders within your environment. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a new opportunity, enter in some required fields here. So we're going to go ahead and, and this opportunity, we're going to quote them a, a truck. Okay, so new truck for fleet. Okay, we're going to add, a, so assuming we know the account and an associated product list. I'm going to go ahead and save that information. And let's say for this example, the customer comes to me and is now ready for a quote. So I'm going to go over here into my quote entity. I'm going to press this plus button to add a quote to this opportunity. Okay. Now we're in our quote screen in Dynamics. Again, still all out of the box Dynamics. And up at the top of the screen, you're going to see some buttons that ExpertLogix adds to the quote. Uh, which we have here configure. So if the customer wanted some budgetary numbers that go out the door quickly, your salesperson could come in here, press this configure button, launch ExpertLogix, and we can start configuring our truck for them. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a truck. We know what model they want with this uh, truck model, which is the EX5000. And now we're in the main user interface of ExpertLogix. So in theory, if, if the customer just wanted a budgetary quote for a standard truck, a salesperson could just press this quick view button up at the top here and get a nice top-down summary of what, what this truck uh, is and what are some of the associated costs with it. We can, send, we can print it and send it out to our customer uh, so they have those budgetary numbers. But let's just say the customer you know, comes back to us and just says, well, we'd like to make some changes within the configuration. So we're now going to go start our configuration journey. So a couple things to notice here. On the bottom of the screen, we have different complex calculations that are going to be running uh, as the salesperson is making changes. Things like total list price, uh, total weight of the vehicle, commit, how much commission they're going to make on the deal, gross profit, right? Different things associated to this to let your salesperson know in real time what, what that's going to look like. Okay? 
We also have some associated questions uh, for the customer that the sales rep can run them through in order to select the right products, right? And so one of the questions we have here is, well, what's the terrain going to be like for the driver? So the customer says, well, Alex, you know, the terrain is going to be very hilly. So we go ahead and select hills. And what happened within Expert Logics is that a rule then fired that says uh, it suggested a more powerful engine and because they're going to go over hills. So the customer comes back to us and says, well, that's great, but we want an like, even more powerful engine than that. So I simply just go down to the engines section here. I'm going to press select a different engine. I'm going to go ahead and filter out my product options by peak torque that are greater than 2,000. And that filters out my products. I'm going to make a selection and press save. Now, you'll also notice here an example of a rule that's firing called a constraint rule. This is basically letting the salesperson know that an error has been made. So the, what this is saying is that the engine's peak torque is way too high for the standard transmission. So if I press OK, you'll notice how we have some red marks here within the configurator that tells us that an error has been made. And all of the incompatible transmissions are going to be grayed out. I can't make that selection. But the ones that aren't, I can. So I'm going to go ahead and make that selection. And the red marks go away, and I can move on with my configuration. Again, the idea of this is making sure that it's simple. It's rules-based selling. So every quote that's going to go out the door is going to be 100% accurate for your customers. Okay. Um, we can also make it very graphical for them, a graphical approach. If you wanted to change the color of the truck or the way they view the truck, so if we want to add a cab or a sleeper to the back of it, you can view that as well, something else we support. Now, I'm going to go down into this pricing summary section where you're going to see other complex calculations being run, but really I wanted to associate a discount for this customer. So I really, really like this customer, and I'm going to go ahead and give them a 50% discount. Well. Expologix, you know, draws a flag up and says, well, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Salesperson, this is going to require approval. We need a discount reason. And with Expologix's integration with Dynamics, we actually flag workflow and approvals within Dynamics. So you can send out an email or uh, a notification in a queue for a sales manager or director who can approve this quote before it goes out the door. Okay. But for this instance, I'm going to in enter in a 10% discount. Looks like we're good to go, and I'm going to press Save and Close. Now, when I do that, all the product line items and information that I just configured as a salesperson is going to be written back in one hit inside Dynamics Quote Entity, as you can see here, along with our associated pricing for the total amount that you can now forecast and report off of. Okay. Now. If you wanted to simply go ahead and send the quote off to the customer, you can. You can print it off. You can send them a PDF report, et cetera. But for this, for this example, what we're going to do is, let's just say the customer comes back to us and says, Alex, well, we really want to see a couple comparisons uh, just, to, just to see which one we really want to go with. No problem. So what we can do is we can relaunch the configurator, ExperLogics here, and you'll notice that our original configuration is saved. Now what we can do is I can press this button called Duplicate. And what that's going to do is take a carbon copy of our original configuration and, and make it a, a second configuration that we can now work off of and edit. So when I press Edit, I'm just going to simply go in here and just the customers come back to me and said that they wanted to add uh, a sleeper because they want to make sure their truck driver is a little bit more comfortable. So I'm going to make that selection. And ExperLogix is firing another rule that says this is an upsell opportunity. And I can go ahead and add those to my configuration. And now we're good to go. We're in time. Oh, wow. That was quick. <laughs> so uh, we're, just, we're just getting to the end there. But, um, but I appreciate your time. And, and that can give you a compare all screen and a side by side like that to send to the customer as well. So that's all I have to give. And I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alex. And our next presenter is Ryan Pennant from QGate. I'm going to move control over now. Great. Ryan, you should Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Yep. Can you, can you see my screen now? No, we do not see your screen. Oh, oh there oh, you go. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. 
Thanks, thanks a lot. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for your time today. Um, I'm Ryan Pennett from QGate, and today we'll be discussing our telephony uh, solution, Intel CTI, which connects your users' phones to Dynamics 365, allowing for click to dial, screen pops, and capturing all call-related activities directly into Dynamics for easy review and reporting. Before we jump into it, though, real quick, a uh, little background on QGate. Uh, we've been around about 21 years with offices in Europe, North America, and Australia. And the product you're seeing today uh, was developed about 20 years ago, and we've been in the dynamic space uh, for about 10 now. And in addition to the phone integration, we also offer solutions to cleanse your dynamic system of duplicate records and ultimately keep it clean with the uh, Paribus family product. So if you want any more information on that, uh, please visit the ParibusCloud.com. But let's discuss Intel CTI. Uh, so why would you want a CTI solution, specifically Intel CTI? Well, there's really two main reasons. Uh, one is to increase the user efficiency as it relates to phone call activity, right? And two is to be able to capture and analyze all your phone call metrics right into CRM. So it gives you a, a, a greater knowledge, if you will, of your staff's phone interactions as it relates to your customers. So how do we increase the user efficiency? Well, basically, uh, we make uh, dialing uh, outbound calls and receiving inbound much, much easier. So basically, you can uh, improve the dialing by not having to dial a 9 or a 1. Intel CTI would basically do that for you. And uh, in, on inbound calls, it will show the caller's information. You can see who it is before you pick it up, and it will automatically screen pop it right into the system. So uh, ultimately, we're going to gain uh, call volume uh, by both of these means, probably by about 40%. And because we're actually bringing you right to the person's record, uh, that caller, especially on an inbound call, you got all their information in front of you, so you can have an intelligent conversation with your customer and get all their call uh, order information or any specific issues they may have, and you can uh, basically get to their needs immediately. So we think it's going to improve your customer relationships and, of course, service levels and ultimately customer satisfaction. And since all the information is in CRM, you can be able to report off of that and have uh, more intelligence going forward. Um, and I think because of this, you're going to see more uh, a greater user adoption, okay? And keep in mind that this product is not just for call centers. Anybody who basically wants to gain knowledge of their phone interactions with their customers uh, or improve that service level should have a system like Intel CTI. All right, let's talk about some of the key benefits here. So Intel CTI will allow you to dial from just about anywhere, hyperlinks as well. So whether you're an account, contact, leads, opportunities, what have you, a single click, and it will establish an outbound call. And for those inbound calls, we're going to be able to see who it is before you even answered it, and it opens right into their records automatically. You can capture notes, and, of course, everything's recorded right in Dynamics for easy reporting, as we discussed. And you can even create contacts, accounts, and leads um, if they're not already in CRM and associate or create cases and opportunities as part of that workflow. All right, so uh, some of the other key features. We support over 60 different phone systems. So we probably support your phone system, most likely. Um, but we also support uh, Skype for Business, as well as cloud-based phone systems like Broadsoft. And we support uh, Serum 4 through um, B365 version 9, including on-prem, online, and partner-hosted. And this is a SaaS model, so it's uh, pay monthly, as we're all typically used to these days. And we were probably the first to support Unified Service Desk, and we've made it even better with the new release, which we'll go through here in a sec. So uh, let's take a brief tour of Intel CTI. So I'm going to jump in here to uh, Dynamics. As you can see, I've got maybe a list of uh, hot contacts that I have to talk to today. Um, Intel CTI is running here on the right-hand side of my screen, which I can collapse or expand as necessary. Um, and uh, I can initiate outbound calls basically just by clicking on a hyperlink here in CRM, whether I'm on a list view like this or in a detail. Um, or I can use the included dialer pad here in Intel CTI which Intel CTI keeps track of where I'm navigating in CRM. So whether I'm on a detail view, an account, a contact, an opportunity, what have you, or like this on a list view, as I select a record, it will show any of the phone numbers for that selected record. Okay, so for example, let's say I want to call Lou Balbo today. Uh, maybe I need to uh, discuss with him uh, his interest in an extended service agreement. Okay, so in this case, I can go ahead and choose Lou and his, uh, choose which phone number I think is best to reach him and hit dial. And when I do this, Intel CTI will pick up my phone, as you can probably hear in the background, and begin dialing Lou. 
And we can see here there's an outbound call going out to Lou Balbo. And uh, when he picks it up here, this little notepad will automatically expand so I can uh, take some notes here during the call. So maybe during the call I discuss with Lou, hey, you know, uh, maybe I'll call you back on Monday or what have you to see what you're interested. Or maybe Lou's going to tell me, hey, I'll, I'll let you know if we're going to move forward with this. So I can take some notes during the call and then ultimately hang up. And I can hang up here or put the receiver back down on the handset or even turn off my Bluetooth headset. When I hang up, at the end of every call, whether inbound or out, I get in, uh, this call wrap-up screen, which shows me the call direction, the date, the time, the duration, and any of the notes that I took there within the Intel CTI dialer panel. And I can even create follow-up activities. This will create a completed phone call activity so that I know I spoke to Lou and what I spoke to him about. And I can just say, okay. Now, let's say a couple days go by and Lou calls me and he's made a decision. He, in fact, wants to move forward. So he's approving the, uh, the, the purchase of the service agreement. So if Lou calls me, we can see an inbound call coming in here from Lou. So before I even picked it up, I know it's Lou, so I can answer it. Hey, good morning, Lou. And we can begin our conversation. Now, let's say during this uh, time between the last phone call and today, I created an opportunity. And I want to link this call to the opportunity. So I can put some notes in here about what we discussed. He's approved it. And uh, I can actually go in here under this call assistant area and link it to either a case or opportunity. In this case, I can see I have an opportunity that matches, select it, and choose Associate. And now you see that the call is not only associated to Lou, but also to the opportunity. And when I hang up here, you'll see the end of call wrap-up screen, but you'll see now it's also linked to the opportunity. And I can actually just take a look at the opportunity by clicking out uh, Manage and CRM. I could have also done it from the side there in a the hyperlink. But basically, it will bring me now right to the opportunity. An important thing here is that I not only created an activity against Lou and his contact record, but, of course, against the opportunity as well. Sorry, my, my system decided to get a little slow. <laughs> Anyways, um, you can see here, uh, back at the activity level, um, I've got all of the information that I've ever spoken to Lou about, including on the opportunity if I wanted to go in there as well. Okay? And one last thing on an inbound call. Let's say Lou called me back and he's having an issue. So I perhaps want to create a case or something. Okay? So again, on an inbound call, um, I see it's Lou. I answer the phone. He says, hey, I've got an issue with my monitor. It's, it's flickering. I can go in here, and I can actually create a new record. In this case, I'll create a case. And so I don't have anything open now. I say create new, and I will can just say, oh, monitor is flickering or something like that, right, and say create. And it will actually create a new case or opportunity if I had done that and screen pop it automatically into the record, okay? So very easy to create records on the fly. I can create contacts and new leads if the people have never, uh, never spoken to them and they're not in CRM already, and it's just a simple click or two away. And, of course, as you can see here on the case, um, I, of course, have any of the notes I took here. I can end the call. And now the wrap-up screen, if let's say I resolve the case, on the wrap-up screen I can even click Resolve and put in the steps that it took to resolve the case, and everything's just in CRM. All right? So with Intel CTI, I can easily call the people I need to call with a single click, anywhere from CRM. I can easily answer inbound calls, and it will ultimately take me directly to the record. I can associate the call and even allow me to create new records like cases, opportunities, and what have you on the fly. All right? So let's jump back into the slideshow here. Um, the main thing, of course, that now that all that data is in CRM, okay, it allows you to track all the key metrics directly from CRM, right? So we do include a dashboard in the system, but um, you can use your own da data. You can use the data, excuse me, for creating your own reports or dashboards as you see fit. And as I mentioned earlier, we do support USD, and it's new and improved, so there's no client software at all. It's just the standard native USD client. Uh, we have some inbound call controls that you can see here in the upper right. And for inbound calls, we just open up a session right away. And, of course, ultimately, all data is stored in CRM, just like the web cloud, uh, browser. And you might say, well, uh, you know, I want to make sure this fits my needs from a workflow standpoint, or I've got custom entities. There is an SDK that's included. Um, there's no additional cost for it. You can expand the capability of the product as you see fit. So it's a very nice feature. And so ultimately, I hope you see that Intel CTI will increase productivity through an enhanced user experience, right? 
Um, you're going to be able to improve the customer engagements uh, and ultimately provide outstanding data for your business intelligence. All right. So if you want to learn more or uh, you're interested in a free trial, just search the web for Intel CTI or reach out to me directly at the email and number below. And I want to thank you guys for your time today. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, our next presenter is uh, going to be Sheila Ochoa. And Sheila, I'm just going to pass control to you now. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen out. So hopefully you all can see my screen OK. We can. Great. So yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I work, my name is Sheila Ochoa, and I work at Rockton Software. Um, just a little bit of background, we've been in the Dynamics um, Microsoft channel for about 19, 20 years. Um, we've got eight products. Um, some of them are for Microsoft Dynamics GP, but we also have entered the Dynamics um, 365 CRM um, platform, and we've got a couple of products there that I want to talk to you guys about today. So that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So the three products that I'll be talking about um, are products around like subscription invoicing. So if you think about all the different industries out there, for us, for example, that sell software, or you've got partners or ISVs or other companies selling hosting. Um, services, um, you've got water companies, anything like that, that are doing delivery or providing services. And then doing that on a recurring basis, maybe it's you know monthly, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's yearly, all kinds of different um, recurring cycles happen. So we've got a recurring billing product that is going to create and send the invoices um, out to whoever you've identified that those invoices should go to. Not only does it send the invoices, though, it also does the email communication to the customers, which I'll show you a little bit about. We also have um, another product called software management. And software management really is the same thing as recurring billing. The difference between the two products are software management is geared towards software companies. So ISVs, partners, we have some already using our product. Um, it does the same thing. It does recurring type of invoicing. But not only that, it has additional entities used for registration key tracking or maybe tracking product version information, things like that. And then lastly, we have our tax processing product. And our tax processing product can calculate taxes. And it can do it on quotes, orders, and invoices, standard and CRM. But it can also work with our other products. So you might use um, CRM alone and not use recurring billing or software management and need the ability to make sure that your taxes are correct on your quotes that go out. But not only that, you can um, pair it with recurring billing or software management. So when those invoices are generated, it also generates the tax. So that's what we're going to take a look at. So I've got recurring billing up here. You can see that it's integrated right inside of Microsoft Dynamics 365 CRM. It does work with the sales module. So you know your invoices, quotes, and orders, that's where it lies. I've also put in the tax processing product as well. So I'm going to be using them together. So that's why you see both little um, icons here. But what I did is I went to billing schedules. And billing schedules is really the heart of of it because that's going to be your templates of you know setting up who you need to bill and what you need to bill for. And so once you get these set up, then you just run them. So as you can see here, um, my demo is going to be for a um, management property management company. Again, this could be you know you pay for your mo your phones monthly, you pay for your cable bill monthly. Um, but let's say you're an apartment complex, and you can see here that I've got some really um, important renters in my apartment complex here. But let's just take a look. Um, first, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at these, but I'm just going to run this just to make sure everything runs appropriately. What I can do here is I can say, OK, all of these billing schedules need to have invoices created for them. So I can use a workflow to actually force those to run on demand. But I could also have a nightly job that's going to do that for me as well. So I'm just going to mark all those to get them kicked off and say, OK, all of these billing schedules need invoices. Well, what do those billing schedules look like? So your billing schedule, again, is your heart of your transaction. And it's identifying 
who you need to invoice, when it's due, so my due date is over here, I can also add a price list. So maybe I'm charging rent, if you can see my products that I'm billing my customer for down here, but maybe my rent is lower in North Dakota than it is in Colorado. So I've got two locations for my apartment complex. I have one in North Dakota and Fargo, and then I have one in Lafayette, Colorado. So again, you know, your prices could be different based on your location. So I'm using my price list here. But after you've identified, okay, who do I want to bill and what do I want to bill them for, you need to also say what frequency. So are these monthly invoices? Are they weekly? Are they quarterly? Are they yearly? You determine how often that, that invoice needs to be generated. I mentioned that you could have it generate on demand or you could manually generate it. So if I wanted to generate it on a nightly job, I could say, you know what, this invoice needs to be generated 30 days before it's due. And then the system would automatically do that with a job that's run at night. These billing schedules also give you the ability to assign a penalty. So let's say, for example, a customer doesn't pay on time and you want to assign them a penalty, you can do that. And then your reminder schedules is really your communication to that customer. So maybe um, you need to let them know that their invoice is due. So what I'm going to do is just now jump into an invoice. So you can see I've got this, um, I'm billing the customer for all of these services. They've got dog fees now, where they have to pick up after the dog. They're, they could have a parking garage. Maybe it's a high-end apartment that has an HOA or a, a condo complex, what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to my invoices here. And you can see that my invoices are generated. Now I'm just going to go ahead and open up one in Lafayette here. And I mentioned that um, you could have you know, multiple lines here. And with this one in Lafayette, I'm just going to come down here to this recurring billing section because I mentioned that you could have these emails go out. So if you think about all of the communication that your users have to do, um, you could have these reminder schedules automated. So instead of your end users manually creating a template every time saying, you know what, your invoice is due in 30 days. And if they haven't um, responded or haven't paid it, maybe you send another one out in 15 days saying your invoice is due. Maybe it's past due and you need to send them a, a message saying, you know, you haven't paid your rent. If you don't pay it, you're going to have a 5% penalty fee. So you decide what messages you want them to send and, and the system just automatically sends them for you. Okay? So all of that, all of these invoices just sit out here and all of the messages just, just go get automatically sent for you. Another great feature is notice that my tax is calculated for me. I didn't have to do anything with the taxes, and that's because I've got that tax processing product set up. So for example, if I go into my rent line item here, I can see that it's charging $89.82 in tax. And it's actually breaking up my tax details based on what I've identified is my tax in Lafayette. I've got my city, my state, my county, my um, special tax. Now, I've chosen to actually manually say what my tax schedule is. So I actually, in my product, created my tax schedule and assigned it to my customer. But we do also have an integration to Avalara. So for those customers that don't want to have to manually update their own tax schedules and deal with all of that, if they want to have a account with Avalara, we also do an integration there. And then that would be just a separate add-on that they have. And the, ca the taxes calculate using Avalara taxes. So as you can see, I've got my invoices out here. Um, the messages are, would automatically get sent. Um, I can choose to send those a copy, um, send those messages with an attached copy in a PDF format of the invoice, so the user gets the invoice, and all of that stuff gets tracked as activities on the record, and then up to the account entity as well. So that is basically how the product works. Um, again, if you're using software management, it would be the same thing. You just have additional reg keys that you might be sending somebody if they're doing software that requires registration keys. You can send a report along with your invoice giving them the, the updated registration keys. 
So that is our recurring billing product and our tax processing product working. And let's go back to my slides here. So just to get a little bit more information to you, if you want to try it before you buy it, you can certainly do that. All of our products are available on the Microsoft App Source. You get a free 30-day trial. Also, I want to mention, too, if you have any questions about functionality or what the products do, um, I'm happy to test out certain scenarios for you as well. Um, um, our pricing and more information about our products is available on our website, so all of our pricing is out there so you know exactly what that pricing is going to be. And then I also want to encourage you, if you're going to be out to um, GP um, User Group Summit in Arizona in October, we will be there and you can actually see our product. Um, we'll be doing demos there, and we're at booth 809, so feel free to stop by. So my contact information is available. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sheila, and uh, thanks to all our presenters. Um, a tough challenge, uh, I think 10 minutes worth of, of uh, information to, to show and discuss, um, and I, I do really want to thank all of you. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Some have been coming in already, um, and we're going to get right into them here. So if you have been saving any questions, anything you've seen, um, that you want more information on, please do ask it. All right, so let me get to the first one here, and this is for, um, this is a CAFEX question, so Gethin, this is for you, asking about um, the Live Assist GDPR compliance. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so obviously we're um, storing transcripts of the conversations that are happening, and those transcripts can be stored uh, inside of Dynamics 365 as well as in our cloud servers. We've been through and uh, are fully GDPR compliant, uh, and I've also attain, uh, attained ISO 27K compliance as well. So we've got all the relevant paperwork and uh, certifications for handling data as a um, data processor. All right, um, a question for uh, Michael Ox um, from Cobalt. So um, someone asked that, you know, you demonstrated uh, 115 records queued up. Uh, it took several minutes uh, with the screen open. How would this work for many more uh, records, including companies, contacts, and the related, um, the related entities that had to be migrated at a much larger scale? Sure. That's a good question. The, so the queuing process, the 115 that you were seeing, is the number of distinct entities in the system. So be it account, contact, um, invoice, order. So that's not necessarily the number of records. So there's closer to 2,000 records that we migrated um, during that process. Um, so, but it's a, it's a good question because um, because all of the throughput to Dynamics 365 Online happens through the web APIs. And that's pretty much all that Microsoft gives us to be able to push that data into the cloud. Uh, and any tool that you use is going to, um, the bottleneck is always going to be that web API and um, how much throughput you can get through it. Uh, we get about five records a second. You can kind of do the math based on uh, the number of records that you have. Um, going back, um, you know, doing the math from the number of records you have, do I buy five records a second, you kind of estimate the time. The nice thing is you do have that live migration option, so you can continue to use um, the source system while you're migrating, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it is going to take a lot of time. It's something to um, you know be aware of. Obviously, this is a sort of we only had 10 minutes, so we only pushed you know a couple thousand records. So obviously, we couldn't do a couple million uh, in that short a period of time. But the overhead for setting it up is the real benefit with migration dynamics. You don't have to do all that mapping and things um, up front in order to get it running. So, thank you for the question. Great, thanks. Question for Alex Walters. Uh, wanted, someone wanted to know if uh, ExpoLogix can be exposed to the web. Yeah, that's a great question. So the answer is yes. ExpoLogix supports both uh, B2B and B2C deployments um, on the web for dealers or customers to do their own self-service quotes and orders. Uh, whether that's through a Microsoft portal, we also integrate with Sana Commerce and, uh, and Dynamics Web as well for that. All right, excellent. Um, question for uh, Ryan Pennant. Um, asking, do you support customer, oh, I'm sorry, custom phone fields? Yeah, great question, actually. 
Uh, we do, as long as you know, on the account contact and lead out of the box, so it's a simple configuration with the tool we have. You just select the field you want off of those entities, and it will be added. Um, if you want custom uh, phone fields, excuse me, custom entities, I should say, um, that can be uh, handled with the SDK as well. But certainly either one could be supported. All right. Um, a question for um, for Sheila from Rockton Software. Um, and uh, this one is asking, how is the Rockton Recurring Going Solution licensed? So that's a great question. Um, our Rockton um, D365 products are all licensed monthly per organization. So you could have, you know, 10, 20, 30, 100 users. You're not being charged by user. It's actually by org. So right. thanks for the question. Um, yeah, great. And, and let, me, let me open that one up to everyone else as well, because I know that question comes in um, fairly frequently in, in these types of sessions for, for multiple um, solutions. So maybe, Gethin, could you address that as well? And we'll just go, I'll go through, through the other um, presenters as well just on, to touch on how, how your products are licensed. Yes, absolutely. So uh, as, a, as a cloud service, um, our licensing is a subscription model. Um, our licensing is based on a, a minimum of a 12-month commitment, and it's on a named user basis. Great. Uh, Michael, can you uh, speak to that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Migration Dynamics is licensed on a per-source organization basis. Um, the licensing is basically gives you the ability to migrate to as many destinations. Uh, destination organizations as you want. So if you want to migrate to a sandbox first, you can do that, and um, and then you can subsequently migrate to production and only have to pay for one license. Great. Um, and Alex Walters from Explologics. Yep, we're we are a per user per month license subscription for uh, named users. Great. And uh, Ryan. Yep, uh, we're also subscription, and it's per user, and you don't have to license all CRM users, just those that need the uh, phone connectivity stuff. And we have either named or concurrent. Uh, named is $11 per user per month, and concurrent is uh, 1950 And it's a, there's a one-time provisioning fee, depending on the phone system, which typically is about $950. Um, and that's uh, those prices are with a 12-month uh, contract with a minimum of five users. All right, excellent. Um, we have one more question in the queue here. Um, I just want to, so a final call, if anyone else has anything else they're holding on to. Um, this one's uh, for uh, Mike. It's, well, I'll actually kind of combine a couple couple things here. So um, one is just asking, do we need um, an Azure account for using Migration Dynamics? And then the follow-up to that was, um, can you speak about how much pre-work is involved? Uh, you do not need an Azure account. We will host the Azure services and the queue. There is an option for those who want to self-host uh, as well. Um, we see a lot of EU customers who want to self-host. Uh, they don't want the data going into our um, our Azure instance. Uh, so that's an option as well. Uh, what was the second question? Sorry. How much pre-work is involved? So Migration Dynamics will migrate data for you. Uh, it, it is exclusively built to migrate data. Uh, it, does not, it doesn't move uh, customizations. It won't move solutions for you. So that's um, you'll either need to do that yourself, or you'll need to um, contact a partner to help you with that. All right. I want to remind everyone in the audience, uh, well, first, thanks so much for your questions. Uh, we did record today's event, and we'll be sending you information on how to access that very soon. Um, and thank you to um, all of our presenters today. Uh, great job to all of you, and thanks for taking the time. Uh, we are going to wrap up there. Um, so thanks again, and have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.